right, welcome to the one within all. We are live with Bradley Scott, and we're going to be talking about Hello. what's going on with this Notre Dame thing, and then whatever else comes up in the process. Uh, so, welcome everybody. If you do join live or after the broadcast, please do us a big favor and share it with your friends that you think would like it, whether that's in a group somewhere or on your wall or whatever. Every little bit helps. We love to connect with more tribes. So welcome, Bradley. Thanks for joining me all off the spur of the moment here, man. Oh, thank you for having me, uh, Chance. Uh, it's been a very dynamic day uh, from the moment I woke up. I knew something was going on energetically. I just had that sensation that I was like a cat being stroked backwards. So there was definitely something rippling through the collective. And then the moment I checked my Facebook, I started seeing these uh, images of Notre Dame on fire. And at first I was like everybody else, I was saddened by the loss of art and the loss of history. But then as I peeled a little deeper and got past that first, you know, instinctual reaction of sadness of seeing something historical going down, I started thinking about what the ramifications of something like Notre Dame being a blaze is about. You know, it's more about what it stands for and what it is stood for. See, Notre Dame has huge ties with the Knights Templar, uh, actually, the last living Knights Templar uh, Grand Master was burned at the stake in front of the Notre Dame. And as he was going up in flames, he said he hoped that everybody that uh, put him to death would be cursed. And so they're saying this is a probable theory for that, that no Notre Dame coming up in flames. And also Notre Dame being it's a really uh, on slow fire freaking just, curse. <laughs> Yeah, a little slow, but you know, sometimes those are the best ones, a slow, a slow burn, um, <laughs> because it comes out on the tail end of the Catholic Church uh, being exposed for having this huge pedophilia ring, which is insanity. If you've been reading it up on Friday, they started popping up on articles and different news feeds and Reddit and everywhere that um, there has been this, you know, these investigations and audits have been going on and they have found that there has been uh, sexual predators among the Catholic uh, priesthood and, you know, all the way up to the Vatican that have been using uh, perverse versions of sex magic, as you will, to subverse uh, people and young boys and even women uh, in The Nuns and all that stuff. You know, that movie, The Nun, was a horror film, just came out a few years ago, was all about that. It's all about how this regime that has been leading takes what we think is holy and switches it on its end to be subversive and imprisonment. Imprisonment, it's all about binding and keeping us in fear. And it's, it's almost like I was talking to a client today and this kind of popped up that these attacks are an attack on our heart. It's like dying the death of a thousand paper cuts. You know, we just, as people trying to stay in the light, we see things like Notre Dame burning down and that really, you know, as an empath breaks us apart because it's a beautiful, building and what it means for France, but what it means deeper for the burning of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church are people who put men and women to the stake and burned them and hanged them, proclaiming they were witches just because they had opposing ideals from the Catholic Church. Back in the day, the so Pope used to have a whole squad of castrated boys to be his personal choir. So, I mean... Yes. I, Yes. Whatever they've Distracti. evolved since then, like even if the organization has in some way evolved, I don't see how something like with those kind of roots is going to grow into all of a sudden be like some massively beneficent, beautiful tree. I think it's exactly as Correct. you're talking about. It's an inversion. And that's once yeah. you actually enter those halls of power, you if you somehow didn't already know when you were on your way there, it's basically a secret society. And it's one that yeah. is infiltrating other secret societies proceeding uh, throughout the globe, all kinds of, all kinds of strife. I mean, you can go all the way back to the original Protestant reformation or even a lot of what we right. see with the problems in Islam and the Catholic church has played a role funding both sides of many conflicts. Mm -hmm. So it's always been, um, 
around basically for what seems right. to be hundreds or thousands of years and has been a dominant power structure for all this time. And I agree with you also that we shouldn't be sad about the art part of it because part of the uh, dominance hierarchy is believing, having everyone believing that these certain old works of art that belong to the Vatican are the shit and they're the best thing ever and nothing could ever surpass that. So like, why don't we just build something so much cooler than Notre Dame that we wouldn't even be bothered that it's gone, right? Right. The old ways have to die so that new can come through. It's like cleansing the forest fires. You know, those happen naturally through lightning and things. Well, that happens so that the new trees can grow. The old trees are done and they need to move out of the way. But what you were talking about, it's the great deception. It's mentioned in the Bible. And it even says, I have said this on my page and other pages, that the Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon of Revelation. She is the one that spreads her legs to all nations. And they, uh, she's the church that is drunk on the blood of the saints because of all the killing and, and the murders and crusades that have been fought in her name. And she is the great deception of saying, oh, we're, we're getting you to worship one thing, but in actuality, all of the sacred geometry they use in these giant cathedrals to lure you into a state of uh, kind of trance Receptivity. where you really don't yeah, like where you don't know what you're receiving, you're open. It's almost like walking into these cathedrals, You, it's like taking a hallucinogenic. You're walking in there and they're able to manipulate you and implant ideas so that you think it was yours. Yep. And Real spirituality is they, actually about dealing with and studying actual spirits, like for real, real, yes. like in the spirit world, actual entities that connect with our world. And uh, you think it's a, <laughs> do you think it's a coincidence that, they want like you need an exorcist to deal with demons and they have to know the name to get to to deal with it and all that jazz. It's because they made yes. the things like they're the ones that s sent them out upon yep. the world. <laughs> that is very correct. And it's very um, the the rec most recent Pope, Pope Francis actually posted and you can find this on YouTube, just YouTube it, Pope Francis Luciferianism. And during his coronation and the canonization of two different saints, they actually say a prayer, a whole mass to Lucifer. They have a telescope called and Lucifer. Lu yeah, Lucifer is, uh, from my understanding, growing up in the church, is the big Satan. You know, he's the opposite of Yahweh, of Elohim, of the light. Symbolically, all you need to know about this, you don't have to have any certain like religious persuasion or mythological underpinnings to the way you look at the world. Just know that there's a force in consciousness that acts as a deceiver in our collective consciousness and that it is a false light generator and yes. it's the it creates fear through illusion and controls with that by dividing you took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> that is exactly right it's the false light they are the false light and these temples we call them churches, but let's just be real. Their temples were erected on ancient places of power where ley lines intersected and old uh, native tribes and even pagans, as the church would call them, knew these places had power. But the reason they set up these churches is because these temples funnel that power and steal it from the masses so that we can't use it. And only the people that know the rituals and the keys to unlock that temple can actually tap into it. So this whole time, we thought that we were free of Catholic overrule, but their churches and their cathedrals still stand. That means the energy and all that stuff that they did, this grid work that they set up, that some people call the matrix, is literally still holding us in bondage because these churches still stand. So in actuality, this burning and falling apart is one major victory for the real light because it's a loss for the false light. And yes, uh, it's, it's incredible because even I've been seeing pictures of people posting that rose window. If you look at the rose window, it looks eerily similar to the Eye of Horus. And it's right at the top. Eye of Sauron, of, more like... Uh, yeah, the eye of Sauron, right? The false eye. But it's the what the reason it's the false eye is because it is Horus's eye, but it, remember in, in Egyptian mythology, Set stole his eye and then mocked him. 
so these people that are doing this and this, all that stuff, they're mocking the light and saying, ha ha, we're watching you with your own eye. Uh -huh. That's the whole point. And what that even means Olympics. too, is that you're the one policing yourself in the, in the prison. That's the joke. Yes. That's, that's the whole point. We put ourselves in the prison and it's almost like, uh, I've just recently watched Fahrenheit 451 and, uh, that movie, I remember reading the book, but I didn't put two and two together of, Whoa, you know, you just have one of those explosive moments. We put ourselves in this prison and now it's up to us to break us out. But our jailers have become complacent because they don't think we'll ever want to come out. I mean, if they keep us, uh, you know, imprisoned and constantly feeding us. I think they actually believe, I think the, the power hierarchies actually believe that by getting us to focus on this, like it's a tragedy and like many other fake yes. tragedies, like they recently did with the Nipsey thing, which was a complete fake death, not even real. <laughs> I mean, you can even go find articles that on the internet that published that he was dead uh, weeks before it happened with the same, with the exact same reports as each other, like copy pasted. They just got it off. Their wow. schedule was off. Oops. But anyway, it's well, the same type of thing. This is the time of springtime. So it's the generation time. It's awakening and birth and new life. And we're supposed to have like this vibrant, crazy, enthusiastic energy right now. Yes. And instead they yes. want you to invert the current, which is what they do is invert the current <laughs> And uh, focus on why stuff is uh, shitty or decaying or dying or, or what have you. So don't fall for the trick. Don't be sad about shit. Don't be sad about anything. I mean, that's the ultimate uh, lesson here. Because it's an attack on your heart. And it's it's happening in April, the fool's month. So they're being they're using that contrived thing to fool the you. The season and of sacrifice. You. Yeah, they do this every yeah. year. And it's also right because Easter's coming up next week which is all about you know rebirth revitalization springtime regrowth start of a new cycle and so they're trying to do that old sacrifice again and there's there's something going on and i don't know exactly what but it's happening on a special day today's numerology is 22 the master builder and also it's the Ides of April. Everybody always talks about the Ides of, Ides of March because that's when, you know, Julius Caesar was killed, et cetera, et cetera. That's why it became historically, you know, sad. And that there's the Ides of every month. And then the Ide of a month is just like an equinox. It's where light, the powers of light and the powers of the false light both have equal power. No one is winning or losing. So they did something today to shift, to make you feed in to their fear mongering, to their contrived, uh, you know, fire. And so once you get over that first initial fear, you have to start realizing you have to operate in love. And sometimes love is tough love. Like I've been getting a lot of feedback today about how can you be saying this stuff while that these beautiful pieces of art burn? I'm like, yes, I get it. But do you know why they're burning? Like, do you realize what the Catholic Church stands for? Do you are you really more upset about a building than you are about human lives? And that's what we've become. We have forgotten. We we cry over a building, but we don't bat an eye of what is happening even in France today, where they're protesting, you know, equal living, equal opportunity, housing, taxation. This is why things I think that, that it could have been done on purpose by the very powers we're talking yeah. about to try to shift to the focus. Oh, yeah, because I just pulled a, a card and it, it's complicated. <laughs> so but it's also the heart heart color green. So you need to just realize that there are a lot of red herrings going on, a lot of contrived information and as far as I know, Chance, does anybody know how it started? Oh, the fire? I don't know. I, I haven't even given it that much energy. I would I would be totally beyond this if I didn't know that there was some some of our tribe out there who could actually use this message right now. Not that I'm like beyond yeah. people specifically, but I, I know that I don't need to worry about what's going on in the fake matrix and just let it crumble while I build something better. So, but I want that message to get out there because that's the ultimate empowerment that basically you don't have to give a shit about the Notre Dame at all. And you could even be glad if you want, because it represents a huge energy shift. Like you're saying, I mean, what's the, what's the Catholic church founded on supposedly what's the Vatican founded on St. Peter's remains. Right. And how is this guy, St. Peter, 
supposedly killed. He was crucified upside down. Okay, so the Vatican is built on top of an upside down crucifix, which is also the same symbol of the Church of Satan. Okay? Correct. Boom. There you go. I mean, it's all over, though. No. Place. It's all right over. There. Yeah, it's hidden in there. Um, I keep thinking of that meme of Jesus coming back and saying, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all focused on this cross thing. Right. Well, and, you know, and the Catholic Church still preaches that you have to have an intercessor to speak to spirit and to talk to spirit and, you know, deity. That's not true. That was the whole point of Jesus doing what he did was showing us that you are divine within yourself, that the, you know, the rising serpent and the descendant dove is the answer to evolving and ascending. And this this church going up in flames, to me, it was just a huge beacon saying, listen, pay attention. You need to really think about what you were allowing yourself to believe because what you believe creates your reality. And you are getting a moment, a very special moment brought to you by the false light that you can choose to go to the correct light if you want to. So the way to be able to tell false light from real light is just as simple as love and fear. So if whatever the story is, is trying to get you freaked out or afraid in any way, fearful. like, or say this is bad or <laughs> horrible, then it's more or less the false light. Now, on the other hand, if it is, you know, something that is actually bringing light to a, a truth that's hard to take that you maybe don't want to believe, like say that the Catholic Church has been basically running a conspiracy to traffic children across the world for hundreds of years. Maybe you don't want to believe yes. that. But that's not the false light just because cause that's not there to make you afraid. That's there to make you make you aware. aware. Yeah. So there's yeah. tough love and fear are different yeah. things. And I just wanted to like if that makes you afraid, then you need to, of course, examine that. And it's not. But you need to also not be afraid if you can uh, avoid it, because there's not really any reason to be. That's actually what brings apart the, the division. Yes, and that's what they want. They want us to be divided. And I just posted a beautiful video of, you know, this this war has been going on between Arab and Jew and Christian and atheist. And they want us to all stay divided, because if we're divided, we are useless. We don't talk to one another and we don't make a plan and we don't figure out how to get out of this prison and realize that everything we're preaching from every pulpit and temple and synagogue is all the same, then we, we don't ever realize that we are all one and unified. And that's the whole point is to realize that you are free with and in yourself. You don't need someone else to tell you that you're sovereign. You are sovereign. You know, that, and I believe what that's actually what the story of uh, Adam and Eve is about is about mm -hmm. the realization that they're sovereign and that they don't have to basically work for the Elohim anymore, <laughs> that they realize, yeah. oh, we are actually free. The serpent told us, so uh, we're going to do right. our own thing. And then they're punished and kicked out of the garden. But the garden was like this situation that they had no say in the matter. They're just like put in like pets. And that's sort of what they are looking like what social engineers look at the masses like i mean for lack of better phrasing they call it they call it herd immunity with vaccines i mean they literally call you a herd yes and we're treated as such we're treated like animals and we realize we are animals but we have something that animals don't we have a spirit we have thought you know we have the mental capacity to reason and that is what gives us so much deeper and i don't know if animals can meditate i don't know if animals can connect to spirit i mean i know they're a part of spirit but we're a deep a bigger part of spirit that can actually go within and that's the important thing that i've been telling people today you might not like the message that i'm saying because it, it it's irritating and it's not you know, pretty, but what does your heart tell you? You know, if, if, if it's right here, that's where you use discernment that you go within your heart and you realize what is truth and what isn't. So right now I can guarantee you the media is doing a huge job of putting out false flags. Look here, look here, look here and blaming this and whatnot. They're great at that. 
But what you really what you need to realize is that it's a bigger picture of what's going on. And the Nipsey thing to talk touch on that again, that's just another savior mythos, you know? Like we yeah. were talking about Christ earlier, but really what is being pointed to by the scriptures is that we all are supposed to be on the path of ascending, not just waiting for someone to magically be our king. You know, <laughs> that's another thing that's in the Old Testament. The uh, Israelites wanted a human king and it, and whatever the, the Jehovah entity was like, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that'll just mess things up for you. And ended up, of course, right. being the case that bringing authority and putting it in in man is definitely not ever the answer. That's the best lesson to learn is that the the truth is the authority and uh, not authority as truth. Correct. And um, truth can only be felt. It can't be seen, written or heard. You know, so it's, it's it has to you have to take signs and symbols. And, you know, even what we're saying during this podcast for some people is going to be a wake up call and, and make you l- want to learn more and dive deeper into it and chance this podcast are great information for you for that um so go back and listen to some of those but also meditate within and find out what you really you know need to understand from all of this because even jesus said you know take thy cross and follow after me he didn't literally mean to take a cross and follow after him. A lot of things is symbology, you have to realize. So he was saying, follow these steps. And the the false light keeps doing, like Chance said, this uh, sacrificial mythos of the sacrificial king over and over and over again because it brings them power. It brings them power because you buy into it. And it takes power away from the collective. So it's all very very poignant happening right now. And I just hope that everybody is able to get past the first jolt. And also the angels are saying, protect your heart right now, because people are going to say things that are going to hurt your feelings. They're not trying to hurt you. It's just because they're hurting, (laughs) you know, but, and, and it's being reminded them of that. And that's what the false light tries to do. It tries to shut off your heart. It's trying to divide. Yeah. It's the divorce energy. I mean, dive, yeah. divor, it's a pretty crazy root word because you're talking about splitting. Devour. And it's, it sounds like devour, but also it's like you split apart and uh, submerge to the bottom. So it's like yes. double, it's pretty double crazy. So don't let any of this happening divorce you from the people around you in any way or from your own feelings especially but the the way to that is to especially not try to argue even this point that we're making now with someone that doesn't want to hear it and in fact just just like radiate love to a person as much as possible you can like attempt to remove their ignorance but don't ever don't really get into the habit of calling them wrong because that that just turns into a well, people don't a di- like that. A division. First of all, yeah, I don't <laughs> like that. You don't like that. I don't like that. No, nobody likes to hear they're wrong. Yeah, we get very defensive, and so and it's hard. I even stumble with this because I apparently in this lifetime I wanted a really big ego, so <laughs> that was one of my challenges to get over. Yeah. So I have to stop myself. And think, okay, what is a better way to say this than you idiot? You know, so it's, you have to come at it from love. And if it's forcing you to come that way, you have to realize you're in the wavelength of where they want you. So you have to come above it a little bit and maybe even take a beat, take a breath, go within your heart that is still pumping, even if it's bruised and bloody, you can go in there and come out of it with love because the most powerful frequency in the universe is love and so that's why the false light tries to use it by fear mongering and you know manipulating sexual relationships and gender and hierarchy and trust and all of that stuff is it endangers your relationship with your heart and it cultivates fear so if you're trying to operate in the fear mindset you've got to get out of that and realize that you've got to cultivate love and that's something that we're all going to have to keep working on every day. Even me and you who are talking oh, about yeah. it, I still have to, ca- I have to catch myself too. Whenever I'm trying to 
unconsciously manipulate someone because they didn't do what I wanted or <laughs> make, which basically looks like just trying to make someone feel bad about something. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's sort of where it begins. And the small things are what make up the large things. So don't ever underestimate the power that you have to influence the entire, entire fractal by choosing love in even the smallest gesture possible <laughs> or, and you know, big gestures choosing... too, of course, but small yeah. matters, small is yeah. beautiful. And if you've been choosing fear up until now, and then you choose love, and then you choose fear, it's okay. Just go back to love. You can always go back to that center. You are not your past, and you're not the decisions that you made. Those were just decisions, and you made the best decision you could at the time with all of the other variables. You just have to remember that if you make a better step now, you can start the path to change. And that's what a lot of us think is that the moment we become enlightened or ascended or we become a Reiki master or a podcast host or whatever, <laughs> that we're perfect. No, we are not. And we, but we have to be held accountable to ourselves and realize that sometimes we're going to mess up and we got to say so and then move forward in love and light and realize that it's just part of being human messing up. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I say it all the time. Most powerful words you can usually say are I was wrong because that means that you get to learn something and you're expanding. So yeah. there's the power right there. It's actually fuel. And <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the secret to initiating yourself into any kind of a, 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 I guess like occult power and I don't mean as in like black magic but just getting in tune with the hidden mechanics of nature and being able to work with them in order to craft the dream that you're into your liking that requires a, an ability not only to just say that you're wrong sometimes but to fearlessly courageously love yourself in every moment even when something wants to drag your vibration down in any way shape or form i guess is the was, i was losing <laughs> I, was, I was getting too up there i was losing it for a second but uh you, you uh -oh. know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> it's okay and, and also i think on top of that a part of the big occult hidden knowledge is realizing that what you thought or your expectations of something might not be as big as the universe wants to do through you Oh, so you, you have to get out of the way. That's the big thing. And that's what ego tries to keep you. It tries to keep you in the same space. And so ego isn't bad because it keeps you from jumping off of a bridge or doing something really stupid. That's what the ego is there for. It helps you express <laughs> your you uniqueness too. Yes. And it makes you who you are. It makes you weird. That's your, that's your ego. And that's what makes you amazing. But it, it's also the thing that sometimes you have to get out of the way so that spirit can manifest through you. Yeah, it's a tool, right? That's it's like, a tool for us, not a... Uh... Oh, wait, maybe I didn't realize how big this could be. Yeah. Well, yeah, and even the smallest, like I was saying, small things, even the smallest gesture, like helping someone flip from thinking the Notre Dame fire was horrific to helping them see, oh, wait, this is actually basically like a deadwood forest fire that's being uh set to allow for permaculture to grow in its place you know <laughs> that's uh because a lot of those uh a lot of those paintings and carvings and even the floor patterns in these cathedrals are literally mind control yeah they are created the pattern is it does something symbolically in our brain it's so ingrained in our the human collective that when you go into a place like this, you automatically feel certain things and you're open to certain things. So they use that to manipulate us, the sheep, as you would call it. Well, one more thing. <laughs> um, but oh, go ahead. Built, well, but they were built, like we said earlier on places of power. So that multiplies that effect because you're already in a place where it's open and where energy is wild and rampant and it can be anything creative and manifesting, but they use it for a specific purpose. I had a past guest yeah. on named Ross Ben and he is a uh -huh. philosopher and author. He wrote an awesome book about the occult history of Philadelphia, but also he brought to light that the Lenape tribe of that area 
which you, you could possibly even conjecture are like lost Israelites, one of the like the lost tribe, <laughs> as in many Native Americans well, they, are connected to that. the tribes. So they had a yeah. they had a belief about the mound that was at, in the area where Philadelphia is that basically whatever happened there happens with the full participation of the earth. And there is there is a truth to that with the these telluric fields and these ley lines. These are nodal points yeah. and whenever you stack a certain type of energy on every node, then it permeates the whole grid and what's between the nodes. Correct. And this is uh, something that <laughs> the, these nodes are in a sacred it's geometry, in yeah, it's sacred geometry. Ultimately it's like a crystal grid would work. But so anyway, what happened with this particular spot in Philadelphia, it's at the, where the Philadelphia art museum is. They actually all the time will do certain rituals like to bring the popularity, resuscitate the popularity of something that's dying. They did it for the NFL when the NFL was having all kinds of scandals over concussions and shit. They had the they had the draft on the Philadelphia Museum of Arts step, steps, and then NFL ratings were totally good that year. And then Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl for the first time ever. So they really played. There we they go. really played it up. <laughs> and then. Um, there's other examples like the music industry has used it to make a comeback from when Napster was really wrecking them and, you know, like Jay-Z concerts or something. And then uh, recently, I mean, not super recently, but the last time there was a big outbreak of scandal over the Vatican's crazy child trafficking and uh, ritual abuse and sacrifice and all that terrible pedophile stuff, they actually had the Pope come visit and uh, give the largest mass like ever on the Philadelphia Art Museum steps. And then it was like all of a sudden the smoke cleared and no one was talking about that uh, crazy scandal anymore. It was only a matter of time till it came back. But I'm just saying there's a history of even certain places like at the Philadelphia Art Museum being used to influence the whole earth with the telluric fields. It's pretty wild. Yeah, so that means if there's one, there's more. So just pay attention to those places that they use that. And those are the way that the matrix uses to reprogram what we think. Yeah. Well, I think that we've yeah. covered our bases, man. If you want to close with anything, I'm yeah. happy to let you uh, do your thing. But this has been, we've done what I intended for sure. And then some. So <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> You're welcome. I also want to say what's up to Jennifer, who is a, uh, joining us in the chat <laughs> Hi, she said when you set expectations it sets limitations on your experiences and learning potential and that's a really good point that is a good point all right close us out bradley oh, okay well thank you all for uh joining us and listening uh just remember the biggest thing when red herrings and contrived events happen like shootings or wars and rumors of wars or buildings burning down is that it is all an attack on your heart. And so the only thing you need to do is just protect your heart and operate in love and you will always come out on the right side. Very cool. And you know, it also doesn't hurt if we avoid spreading the fear that they want us to uh, feel to other people, even if it's not bothering us that much that we think. So cool. Yes. Bradley, you're the man. I love connecting with you. I think we should do more of these uh, random live chats. If you ever, <laughs> if you ever feel it, just hit me up. We can make lightning strike again. This was cool. Do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jan. Thank you. And everyone listening, thanks for tuning in. And if, if you're catching us live, it's awesome that you did. I want to remind everyone that if you set up post notifications for interverse, then you will get notified when we go live. So you can uh, join us even if you didn't manage to in real time on this one. And on top of that, you can subscribe to the main show with our full fledged one hour episodes at interversepodcast.com where you'll find where you'll find links to Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google play, and just about every other place that podcasts are served. It's been my pleasure hosting this chat and remember, don't be bummed about Notre Dame and Bradley Scott is a, is a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.